Isaiah chapter 14 The Lord will have compassion on Jacob. Once again he will choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners will join them and unite with the descendants of Jacob. Nations will take them and bring them to their own place, and Israel will take possession of the nations and make them male and female servants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. On the day the Lord gives you relief from your suffering and turmoil and from the harsh labor forced on you, you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has come to an end, how his fury has ended. The Lord has broken the rod of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers, which in anger struck down peoples with unceasing blows and in fury subdued nations with relentless aggression. All the lands are at rest and at peace. They break into singing. Even the junipers and the cedars of Lebanon gloat over you and say, Now that you have been laid low, no one comes to cut us down. The realm of the dead below is all astir to meet you at your coming. It rouses the spirits of the departed to greet you, all those who are leaders in the world. It makes them rise from their thrones, all those who were kings over the nations. They will all respond. They will say to you, You also have become weak as we are. You have become like us. All your pomp has been brought down to the grave, along with the noise of your harps. Maggots are spread out beneath you, and worms cover you. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, sun of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of Mount Zaphon. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Those who see you stare at you. They ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made kingdoms tremble, the man who made the world a wilderness, who overthrew its cities and would not let his captives go home? All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your tomb, like a rejected branch. You are covered with the slain, with those pierced by the sword, those who descend to the stones of the pit. Like a corpse trampled underfoot, you will not join them in burial, for you have destroyed your land and killed your people. Let the offspring of the wicked never be mentioned again. Prepare a place to slaughter his children for the sins of their ancestors. They are not to rise to inherit the land and cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord Almighty. I will wipe out Babylon's name and survivors, her offspring and descendants, declares the Lord. I will turn her into a place for owls and into swampland. I will sweep her with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord Almighty. The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely, as I have planned, so it will be, and as I have purposed, so it will happen. I will crush the Assyrian in my land. On my mountains I will trample him down. His yoke will be taken from my people, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? This prophecy came in the year King Ahaz died. Do not rejoice, all you Philistines, that the rod that struck you is broken. From the root of that snake will spring up a viper. Its fruit will be a darting, venomous serpent. The poorest of the poor will find pasture, and the needy will lie down in safety. But your root 
I will destroy by famine. It will slay your survivors. Wail, you gate. Howl, you city. Melt away, all you Philistines. A cloud of smoke comes from the north, and there is not a straggler in its ranks. What answer shall be given to the envoys of that nation? The Lord has established Zion, and in her his afflicted people will find refuge. Isaiah chapter 15 A prophecy against Moab Ah, in Moab, is ruined, destroyed in a night. Kerr in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Dibon goes up to its temple, to its high places to weep. Moab wails over Nebo and Medaba. Every head is shaved and every beard cut off. In the streets they wear sackcloth, on the roofs and in the public squares they all wail, prostrate with weeping. Hezbon and Eliela cry out. Their voices are heard all the way to Jehaz. Therefore the armed men of Moab cry out, and their hearts are faint. My heart cries out over Moab. Her fugitives flee as far as Zoar, as far as Eglath Shelishia. They go up the hill to Luhith, weeping as they go. On the road to Horonaim they lament their destruction. The waters of Nimrim are dried up, and the grass is withered. The vegetation is gone, and nothing green is left. So the wealth they have acquired and stored up they carry away over the ravine of the poplars. Their outcry echoes along the border of Moab. Their wailing reaches as far as Eglaim, their lamentation as far as Beer Elim. The waters of Daimon are full of blood, but I will bring still more upon Daimon, a lion upon the fugitives of Moab and upon those who remain in the land. Psalm 64 Hear me, my God, as I voice my complaint. Protect my life from the threat of the enemy. Hide me from the conspiracy of the wicked, from the plots of evildoers. They sharpen their tongues like swords and aim cruel words like deadly arrows. They shoot from ambush at the innocent. They shoot suddenly without fear. They encourage each other in evil plans. They talk about hiding their snares. They say, who will see it? They plot injustice and say, oh, we have devised a perfect plan. Surely the human mind and heart are cunning. But God will shoot them with his arrows. They will suddenly be struck down. He will turn their own tongues against them and bring them to ruin. All who see them will shake their heads in scorn. All people will fear. They will proclaim the works of God and ponder what he has done. The righteous will rejoice in the Lord and take refuge in him. All the upright in heart will glory in him. Proverbs chapter 13 A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a mocker does not respond to rebukes. From the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things, but the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. Those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. A sluggard's appetite is never filled, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves obnoxious and bring shame on themselves. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. One person pretends to be rich, yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. A person's riches may ransom their life, but the poor cannot respond to threatening rebukes. The light of the righteous shines brightly, but the lamp of the wicked is snuffed out. Where there is strife, there is pride, 
but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Whoever scorns instruction will pay for it, but whoever respects a command is rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life, turning a person from the snares of death. Good judgment wins favor, but the way of the unfaithful leads to their destruction. All who are prudent act with knowledge, but fools expose their folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a trustworthy envoy brings healing. Whoever disregards discipline comes to poverty and shame, but whoever heeds correction is honored. A longing fulfilled is sweet to the soul, but fools detest turning from evil. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Trouble pursues the sinner, but the righteous are rewarded with good things. A good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. An unplowed field produces food for the poor, but injustice sweeps it away. Whoever spares the rod hates their children, but the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. The righteous eat to their heart's content, but the stomach of the wicked goes hungry.